Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today's project is going to be a slub tea wrapped in sinew. This is another one of those projects where I sat down and I enjoyed a movie while I tied this up. And all of it really is just to save on time. If you've watched me tie up one of these, you've watched me tie them all up. But if you don't know how to tie one of these, I do have a handful of other tutorials that you can refer to. They're called geo tie dyes, sinew wraps. I guess it just really depends on who you're talking to. So what I'm doing right now is I'm marking out my pattern using a washable marker. So for those of you that follow along, you know I like to do everything as easy as possible. This is a really weird shape, and I could get out all of my cake molds or foil or cardboard and go all around it, but I wanna just scoop it all up and put it into one little container and dye it up that way. For this project, I'm choosing to use the over-the-sink strainers, and I do have links down below in the description box if you're interested in getting yourself some. I like to use these as often as possible, and I really like them because I'm able to fit two in a tote. That way I can do two projects at the same time. Now it's time for the fun part and my favorite part. We get to add the dye. So for this one, I'm going with greens and purples. Now that we're into fall, my mood has changed on my dye colors. I'm going a little richer, darker. Also, you're going to see a lot of green and purple and darker things coming up because my sister is going to Hawaii and she is a drop dead gorgeous redhead and her colors are green and purple. They just looks so great on her so bear with me you're going to be seeing a lot of that and hopefully out of a handful of projects that I make her maybe one thing she will like When adding your dye to these projects, there are so many different ways you can do it, and you have to find what works best for you. I tend to like to go with the dye under ice method. Because the fabric is so thick, I wanna make sure that I have maximum vibrancy. Muck dyeing is also a great way to do these where you put it in a bowl and you let it sit in all the melted ice water. But I find that I don't have as much control because once you got your dye on there and the ice melts, you set it and forget it. Doing a rack dye like this, I'm able to check it after the first layer of ice melts and I can either add more dye, add more ice, leave it alone, you know, you know what I'm trying to say here. So you can do dye under ice, which I'm doing right now. You can do dye over ice. You can even do these with liquid. And always keep in mind that your colors can be whatever you want them to be. If you don't particularly care for my color palette, that's okay. You just choose colors that make you happy. Once I have the dye on the project the way that I like it, I like to give a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. I'm going to be adding a lot of ice to the project, so I wanna make sure that the pH stays up around 10.5 to 11. After the first layer of ice melted, I came back and I checked it. The back had really good saturation and there was still quite a bit of undissolved dye and maybe some areas that just look like they could use a little more dye. So instead of flipping it, I'm just gonna touch up a few areas, give it another quick little sprinkle of soda ash and add more ice. I made this project before my ice machine gave up on me, 
So the old Frigidaire ice is what you're seeing here. Now I'm happy to report that the new machine is working awesome. All the changes that they've made to it are amazing. So if you've been on the fence about getting yourself an ice machine, I highly recommend this so far. I will keep updating you as we go on, but there's no weird sound, it's not leaking at all, no dents, it's just perfect. Now once you get your ice on the project, it's recommended that you let it batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours. And this project batched for the full 48 hours. Now it's time for the fun part. No, I'm just kidding. Untying these, I swear, it takes almost as long to tie them up. Not really, but like 12 minutes, and it probably took me about 20 minutes to tie up. So yeah, it takes a long time. So now it's time for the rinse out, and you wanna start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric, and then increase your water up too hot, and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine, and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirillon. Kirillon is a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma Trading Company. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft, and Millsoft is a professional fabric softener that I also get from Dharma. And then I'll put it in the dryer, and I'll iron it, and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys here's our slept tee with a three quarter inch sleeve ice dye now you can call this a sinew wrap or a geode wrap whichever you prefer i'm calling it a sinew wrap because i didn't really focus on all the little like circles um i'm really preferring this style it just works better for me visually like i don't know if i like all the little tiny circles but to each their own we all have to find our own style now right here, this reminds me of pine trees with a moon. You know how sometimes we see stuff in our projects? That's what I see right in the middle, a little forest. So the color combination is gorgeous. I'm loving the navy blues with the purples and the dark greens and the light greens. I'm really happy with it. Now the slub tee, you can see how it has a texture in the fabric. Depending upon your fabric, it's always going to change the way it takes dye. And so, this takes dye like a champ. I couldn't be more pleased. I really do think it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, when you're working with purples and greens, you run the risk of getting brown. Brown is something that we should not focus on so much and freak out about. Where the purple and the green do mix and there are more earthy tones, I personally think it looks beautiful. So overall, I'm extremely pleased with the way this turned out. What do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie dyeing.